Okay, so I've had this thought that I could do some t-shirts. And a while back I had bought this beginner kit, which gives me a frame and a screen. And it's been sitting in my closet for quite some time now. So today I'm going to give it a shot. Um, you're supposed to use a photo emulsion to make your negative for your print. Um, I've also seen it done where they cut out vinyl and use that to create your negative. So in this case, I printed out some vinyl on our vinyl cutter and stuck that on. So we're going to make an attempt at this technique and see what happens. Never done this before, only seen it done on a few videos and uh, what I've read over the years planning on trying to attempt this project. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So first I got my vinyl stuck on, squared up with my edges. And then I just put some tape around the edges to keep the ink from flowing through. Since this negative portion, where you see white, is the only part I actually want some ink to come through. So, that said, that will be our print, providing everything goes according to plan. So, to cure the ink, you need a heat gun, is the DIY process. Um, you should have a heat press or even an iron. Um, I'm going to use this to flash cure the ink, and you'll see how that's done here in a few minutes. Um, this is a Harbor Freight heat gun. Um, never used it before. Got it for Christmas, actually. And uh, somebody knew I had some projects that I might need a heat gun for. So this is the one I'm going to use. Um, you can watch how I do it. And if I make a mistake, please feel free to comment and let me know. Um, Again, I've never tried this before, so this is going to be a new attempt. And uh, as far as a formal unboxing, not really anything in there. There's some instructions and the heat gun, but of course, what more is there to a heat gun? You plug it in, you turn it on. Um, this one does not come with tips, as some of them do, but that's okay. We'll make it work. All right, so some other things we're going to need. Um, Heat gun will be for flash carrying. We talked about that. Got some gloves just to keep the ink off my hands. Got some fluorescent speedball water-based ink. Some parchment sheets, which you use to cure the ink. And an iron, which ultimately we'll use to get our heat up on that ink. Um, water-based inks require a heat set in order to be wash safe. So the ink will technically wash off if you don't cure it. It will dry to the touch from the air as the solvents release from the ink, but it will not fully cure to where you can wash it and still have an image left on your shirt afterwards. So that said, picked up an iron. We're going to give this a shot. I don't know if this will work or not, but worth a try, right? Um, we've got some spray adhesive. This just helps your shirt stay put on the board that we're going to use as our backer, which I just cut out a piece of three quarter inch plywood, uh, made it 19 inches wide and 20, sorry, 13 inches wide and 20 inches long. So let's uh, get on to the next step and see if we can't make this happen.
going to use a hand space from the bottom of the collar to the top of this peak as kind of my reference. I don't really have a better way to do it. I think that looks pretty well centered. So you will clamp this down in an attempt to keep it from moving. I should note, I ordered a set of squeegees, but I've actually got one smaller size as well. And uh, these are what I'm going to use to actually spread the ink. away. Let's get our heat gun ready to go. That's all set. Before I get too far, since I plan to put two coats of ink, I want to put a piece of tape right along the bottom here on the shirt so that I have a reference mark to set my design back down. We'll see. That may or may not work. might have to rely solely on one coat. Okay, so first step is to flood the screen. Which I think we've adequately done there. And then 
then we are supposed to push
Okay, so I've discovered that flooding the ink is very important. As you saw, I have some light spots in there, and it's because I didn't get the ink distributed real evenly. Um, at least I think that's what was the cause. And I didn't really have enough ink to push through into the fabric. So let's try it again this way and see what happens. Well, the multiple coats, I think, have hosed us. Well, it didn't quite work the way we thought it would. Um, on the side note, I have also purchased a screen setup and press setup that is how you're actually supposed to do this. I wanted to try it this way first and see if I could do it the simple DIY way. Um, as you can see, having to put it back in the same place three times did not fare so well. We got some shadow lines on the construction. We got shadow lines around these letters in the peak of the house side over here and over here. This right hand side seems to have actually come out pretty well, but for some reason we got a, a ways off over here. So that said, we'll uh, chalk this up to, uh, we'll say, just say it's a failure. It didn't work the way we thought it would. I um, think it could be if maybe I tried a couple more times, but I've only got a few shirts to work with for this, so. I don't want to throw away too many of them. So we will put this up and let everybody learn from my mistakes and find out that uh, it's possible to do, though I don't think it's recommended to do the DIY kits. You're better off spending a few extra bucks buying the proper screens and a press and going that direction. But that way when you lift it up, when you go to set it back down, it sets down in exactly the same spot every time so you can put your multiple layers of ink. Oh well, we'll try again.
Now we're supposed to get the ink to 220 degrees to heat set it for being wash safe. So we're going to go ahead and start ironing and see if we can't get that to happen. Two forty two. Two forty. There you have it, our first attempt, not our best attempt, but we'll try again. Well, that didn't go as planned. Um, I think uh, my biggest pitfall there was not being able to set my screen back in the exactly the same spot, which the press will do because it lifts up and then sets down exactly where you had it. That said, otherwise, it seems to have worked pretty well. Um, going through the vinyl, gave me a nice crisp line. Um, I think that part of it worked. I just think the application of using the DIY screen that you really don't have a good way to put in the same spot twice was the pitfall. Um, also, I'm printing a really bright color on a dark shirt and that's probably part of the problem because it does need multiple coats in order to show through and technically probably should have a white coat below the color. Um, Either way, I'd still have to lift and set it, so I don't think that would have come out any better. Maybe if I, would, I had done like a black ink on a light gray shirt or even a white shirt, that would have been better. But anyway, we'll try again next time, and uh, we'll take a video of that, and we'll share it with everybody. Thanks. See you next time.